Well, we're uh, talking about skin care this morning. Could uh, acne drugs be used as an anti-aging treatment? What's the newest way to combat wrinkles? Are face creams safe to use? Well, we've got a uh, leading dermatologist, Dr. Nick Lowe, with us again. Uh, he's got all the latest skin care news. Good morning to you. Morning. And as you said last week, probably the best skin care is stay out of the sun. <laughs> but we've done that one. <laughs> um, so these are all the kind of latest products. And, and, and anti-aging is, is the big word that's in everything at the moment. Um, but I was reading somewhere that in a, in a year, a woman with all the kind of makeups we use and cleansers and creams, within a year we would absorb five pounds of chemicals, which I found quite worrying when I read that. Yes, because you'll have absorbed I'd have at least with the potions least. and lotions I use. <coughs> um, Slight exaggeration, I think. Th those <coughs> figures are, um, are mainly relating to the, if you were using extensive body lotions, deodorants in places that absorb much more readily. If you're actually restricting it to the face and neck, uh, then you're going to absorb minimal amounts because the skin is not as uh, pervious, it doesn't go, uh, the stuff doesn't go through as quickly. But what chemicals are they talking about that are in skin? Because, you know, a lot of the things we use seem quite natural. They're using... Um, aromatherapy oils and plant extracts. So what chemicals should I be worried about in my skincare products? Well, the answer is if it's properly formulated, you shouldn't be worrying about anything. If they're, if they're tested correctly, then uh, they are safe. There's a list of chemicals that are safe to be included that the European community, the EEC, has worked on for, for decades. Uh, so most of the time, everything will be safe. Um, there's also there's some repetitive questions on things called preservatives. Mm. They're actually putting creams to stop them uh, becoming infected mm. or to stop them infecting uh, the skin of the people that are using them. Some of those are actually incredibly safe, but there's some concerns that in special tests they may show themselves not to be as safe. But in fact, when you test them on humans, they're actually very safe. So anything really that we're buying over the counter at the moment, you can be pretty certain because we've got, you know, strict regulations about testing, are okay. If so bought, don't buy things you haven't heard of on mm, websites and things, mm. really. If they're bought exactly, yeah. if they're bought from a reputable uh, store, a reputable pharmacist, uh, from a reputable company, then they'll be safe. Mm. And you're saying you're talking about uh, testing products. Um, there's a new invention now, which is a they've kind of replicated human skin, which means they won't have to test things on animals. Yeah, this is interesting, and it's important because we want to obviously avoid subjecting animals to uh, to testing uh, unnecessarily. This is where you grow special layers of skin cells that then look like a layer of skin when it's put in a little dish. You put creams on top of them and you can test them then to the, for the damage that the creams may or may not be causing. Very useful for things like new um, uh, ingredients that you want to look at in some of the newer creams. Mm. Well, I read in the papers today, if I eat enough carrots, I won't have to worry about going out in the sun because I'll be orange. You will. You'll look a very attractive orange. Your hair will look orange. Your eyebrows will look <laughs> orange. And, uh, and while you may get actually a, li a little bit of protection from, uh, from the carrots, uh, you're probably going to be uh, uh, not that an attractive colour. But, uh, and that comes from what's the dye? What is it? it it's called beta carotene. And the, that's the ingredient or one of the many ingredients in carrots. Probably the ones that make carrots uh, healthy for you yes. are the vitamins A and D. I've seen that in some tan creams yes. as well. You, you know, the ones that you well, say don't make you orange. it's the one we were talking orange, to you about saying you get abroad that make your skin orange and they've only got like factor 2 protection or something. Well, that's not right. Really. Yes. And uh, the orange may not be as attractive mm -hmm. to some as others. Now, anti-aging then. I, uh, stem cells apparently are now going to be used in, in anti-aging treatments and also uh, new laser treatments that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, there's some new uh, treatments that are coming along that are really quite interesting. Uh, uh, there's a British company doing some research with us at the moment that is actually using a stem cell type of approach where we inject cells that can produce new collagen in the skin. And that looks, uh, in, it's in the early stages of research. We should know the uh, results in the next six months. But uh, fingers crossed, it looks very interesting. But what people really want is, can I buy it in a tub or can I have it injected, mm. really? Where are we at with things like that? 
Well, you can, uh, in fact, th this, th this will be injected, uh, the, these stem cells. Mm. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, that's been injected for quite a number of years are things like Botox and things like the, uh, the uh, fillers. So uh, there's certainly things uh, to inject. Some of the things that you buy in tubs also, like uh, creams that contain the uh, retin-A-like substances, uh, retinoids, vitamin A, uh, they can actually be quite effective at rejuvenating the so, skin. So when, I, when I'm shopping for skin cream, so many of them now say anti-aging. It's the latest kind of phrase to use, isn't it? Should I be looking for a specific ingredient like whatever that was you said, retinol? Yes, the retinols or the retinol palmitates and the, uh, and the antioxidants. Again, look for a good company and look for your products at a, at a reliable pharmacy chain because you know that they will not sell you anything that hasn't been tested What you're thoroughly. really saying is reassuringly expensive, aren't you? No, I'm no, not. What? No, no, no. In fact, some of the modestly priced products are just as effective Good as the hear. very, very expensive ones. Well, we've ones. got this. This is the Boots. Now, that you've been sending us your photographs and uh, calling all morning about your skin complaints. We've got top dermatologist Dr. Nick Lowe with us this morning. And uh, we shared a little bit earlier, uh, Sandra, I think, emailed us a very nasty, sore-looking... Circles. Circles that come up on her leg, I think. Let's have a look at those. Is yeah, these... Uh, Sandra was saying that these came up uh, much worse after sunlight exposure. There's a couple of things that these could be. One is they could be a type of sun allergy, which is called uh, uh, polymorphous light eruption, which is actually an allergy to sunlight. I actually suffer from it myself. Um, and uh, these can be painful and itchy and come up. Uh, she said she can't even touch them to get so Yeah, sore. they can be very painful. The other thing that they need to be, we need to, need to make sure they're not, is another condition called lupus erythematosus, which is a long word, but it can be a skin condition that shows up in sunlight, but it can also affect arthritis and certain other things. Treatment for those sort of things, can they be treated? They, they can be. I think the first thing is to find out exactly what it is, and I think mm -hmm. she should see a dermatologist. would take probably a little skin sample and, uh, and get the correct diagnosis. And stay out of the sun for the time for being. For the moment, suppose, stay yeah. out of the okay. sun. We've got so many pictures and callers mm. and all sorts of things, Nick. Uh, right, Liz from Candy Durham. Hiya, Liz. Hello? Hello, Liz. Now, we're going to have a look at your chest, are we not? <laughs> yes, yes. Here we are indeed. Let's have a look at it. Here we go. Oh, it's a woman's chest. Well, tell us, tell us Liz, it. tell us what's the matter. We can see a picture of you there. What's the problem? Well, I've had this rash for about two years and a rash on my back for about six years. I've seen a dermatologist, um, but he didn't know what it was and he couldn't give me a diagnosis. And I just wondered if a doctor would help me. Yeah. Does it itch quite a lot? No, no, very rarely itches. It um, very rarely itches. Does it burn at all? No. <laughs> and does it get better or worse in sunlight? Um, I'm not sure because I haven't exposed it to sunlight lately. Um, okay. But it does look red and angry sometimes when I've had a bath or in the shower. Yeah. I think uh, the fact that you've already seen a skin specialist, a dermatologist, and he's not uh, come up with an answer suggests that it's uh, a rather complicated problem. I think you should ask your GP to maybe refer you back to that uh, dermatologist who may wish to take some other tests, including a, a blood test and a skin sample, to actually find out more. I think that's very important before going on and treating it without knowing the... Uh, the actual cause. Well, Liz, Liz, thank right. you. I've got to move on. We've got so many other pictures and people to deal with. Thank you very much indeed. John from Norfolk, he sent us a picture of his neck and he says he suffered from this condition uh, since 1999. Uh, he's tried various antibiotics. Nothing seems to work. He's starting to get depressed about it. Uh, he's seen a doctor. Doctor suggests he grows a beard. He doesn't really want to. Is that anything more than, than Shaving, rash. Yeah, rash. Well, it, it's a condition, uh, the medical condition, it's a type of inflammation of the hair follicles yes. that you can see around yes. there. And you make it worse by shaving, which is why it's called shaver's rash. It's not the first thing that it causes it. It's actually caused by hair growing in on itself and then causing redness. Growing a beard isn't a bad idea. It seems to straighten up the hairs. Yes. And you can then, when you shave, you sometimes go away. The other thing is... Uh, an electric razor shaving twice a day will sometimes control that yeah. and the other thing is some antibiotic treatments. Okay. okay, an awful irritation. Thanks for that, John. Thread veins. Oh, a lot of people yes. talking about thread veins. I've got lots of those. Well, here's a picture of uh, Teresa from Wiltshire's thread veins um, on her legs. Is there a treatment? Is there a cure? 
Yeah, well, these often occur um, in women, particularly after pregnancy, but not only women. We all get them. Men get them. Yes, we've um, had Andy from the West Midlands. He said he's got, he's got them, got on, them his on his nose. 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 That's, that's, yeah. Yep, that's another. It's interesting. On the legs, this type of leg vein, they're bluish, so they don't do well with just lasers. That's important. Uh, this is best treated with almost painless modern injections that we can use, get as much cleared as possible, and then uh, use a laser to tidy up any that are left. Also, some people with this will have a tendency to varicose veins, so mm -hmm. a thorough examination is Is that a is painful important. procedure you've just described there? Not at all. It okay. needn't be. It needn't be. Okay, okay. Needn't Jane be. from Northumberland. Hiya, Jane. Good morning, Jane. Are you there? Good morning. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, it's your daughter you're a bit worried about. Yes, she's got, um, well, dry skin on her hands, but it starts off from um, blisters bubbling up, and then literally the, the skin starts to shred off her hands, and our GP doesn't know if it's eczema or an allergy. And has, has she been using any creams or anything? She's used steroid cream for a couple of weeks and then we use aqueous cream which is just a, a moisturizing cream and has that helped it at all not not really they just keep bubbling up with these small blisters okay, hi jane hi. Can, can i ask you a question a couple of questions have you do you ha does she have it anywhere else no only on her hands she's never had it on the feet she's had it on her feet a couple of years ago and it went as quick as it came yeah that's a very important issue because what she's almost certainly got is what's called uh, eczema and uh, it often gets worse on the feet first and it's often when they're wearing sneakers. Right. So the important thing here is to protect the hands as much as possible, keep them out of water, keep them out of detergents, get, get her to use plenty of moisturizing creams that can help to protect and there are some new non-cortisone creams if the cortisones, the steroids don't work. So there are quite a few other treatments that this could be, but in my opinion, this is a type of eczema. And an awful thing for a nine-year-old, an awful thing yes. for anybody to have, but especially at nine years of age, Jane, yeah? It definitely, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much, Jane. Thank you. Um, right, now we've got a picture here. This is of Mary, Mary from London, and this is of her cheeks. Yeah, now this is this, what's this condition called? Is it rosea? This is called yeah. rosacea. 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 And ro what rosacea? It's so many people have this. Very, very common. It's uh, often known as the Celtic disease. Ah. Uh, people from, uh, from the northern part of Europe get very common. I have this. Many people have it. What it is, is it's thought to be a reactivity of the blood vessels in the skin that causes a leaking out of some of the cells that produce these little white acne-like spots. There's some great treatments now for rosacea, medical treatments like antibiotics by mouth, newer creams and gels that are applied to the skin, anti-redness creams that can work very well. And then we can also control this and reduce it with uh, lights and lasers. Can I ask you something? So, so many of these things are treated with creams from the outside. Are these emanating from the outside or the inside? Well, this was a constant debate about rosacea, particularly. It was thought that it may be related to uh, certain stomach uh, complaints. In fact, I think it is related to just the outside, the skin condition itself. But uh, there's some, some of the modern creams are actually quite different. They are effective, and as I say, lasers and pulse lights can also get rid of the, ro the redness of the rosacea. Nick, thanks very much for your surgery today. Thank you very much. You've been very, very good, and I know you've dealt with a lot of people in the, in the phone room as well before, before we're on air. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.